you know, why ACC is making the change in the you know, SBL exam. The exam will place more efficient emphasis on the strategic thinking and professional skill rather than the reading exam content. Pre-seen material. So they would give you a pre-seen material. The exam duration has reduced from 4 hours to 3 hours, 15 minutes. The number of exhibits, which used to be like 5, 6 and at times 7 exhibits that used to be there in the exams, they have reduced it significantly. Now you would only get, you know, 4 to 5 exhibits, uh, you know, in the exam. The exam will now have 3 compulsory tasks. Now, Uh, my name is Pankaj Dhingra and I'm a qualified chartered accountant and CPA from US. I have been working with various corporates, Irfan, like yourself. I've headed the finance for Wipro. I have been uh, working, uh, I used to work as a CFO for BlackRock and then uh, became the CFO for uh, Boston Consulting Group, BCG. I have been shuttling around India, US, uh, you know, and like various countries, you name it. And we used to pack our bag and be there for a long, long period of time. Uh, and of course, you know, alongside, you know, I have been always very close to, uh, I would say, somewhat somewhere uh, uh, to the curriculum, to the academics. And that's what uh, made me, uh, you know, uh, I would say somewhat somewhere, you know, get into my own startup down the line, and which has really now taken up a very different shape. And that is where we are. Just to give you uh, an insight, you know, why we are here, I just wanted to touch base uh, with one of the change that we are observing uh, primarily on the uh, on the uh, you know ACCA SBL side, uh, I hope you guys can see my screen. If not, then let me know if you are not able to. Uh, can I get some thumbs up, ensuring that you guys are seeing my seeing my uh, uh, seeing my screen? Can I get some thumbs up on that, please? Just to make sure that you are hearing. All right, fair enough. Good, thank you. So, uh, guys, just to give you an insight, uh, many of the students around the world are very much uh, concerned and somewhat skeptical about the changes that are happening in uh, in the ACCA SBL exam. Uh, just to give you a perspective around ACCA SBL exam, ACCA SBL exam is an ACCA professional level exam. So, anybody from wheresoever background, if you're really stepping in and, and starting off your ACCA, uh, the two of the exams, which is ACCA SBL and ACCA SBR, both are the exams that are mandatory one. You would have to give this exam and you can't just get over with that. You have to have to give this exam. So that's that's something uh, all of us should know and, and should be aware of. Uh, there are changes coming in the ACCA SBL exam, uh, you know, from the coming September 23 attempt. And that's why, you know, I wanted to be here, you know, just to make sure that I'm able to clarify any doubts, any confusion that anyone may have just to make sure that you know we all are on the same page and there is no doubt anyone would have with reference to September 2023 because there are many myths and uh, uh, presumptions and assumptions going around uh, uh, you know various social media handles in terms of you know what is really going on in this and how would that impact students we just thought that it is all the more worthwhile to be here and really talk through as to what these changes are and to give you a perspective as to how you should be thinking about the SPL exam as you may go forward. Is that clear? Does that sound like a plan? All right, moving on, guys. Uh, I just wanted to, you know, uh, give you, uh, I would say, the broad overview of, you know, why ACCA is making the change in the, you know, SBL exam. And this is something that, you know, I've picked up from various sources in, on the ACCA website and various pronouncements that ACCA has come up with in terms of telling the students as to why this change and why this change would be relevant for the students from mid to long run standpoint. The SBL exam, as we all know, is 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 one of the exam which really makes you prepare uh, for the uh, for the uh, the industry level needs because it really gives you the workplace kind of a situation. Even the exam gives you a workplace situation wherein you are stuck with one of the issues or various issues of any organization. And I being the CFO, I being the finance head, I have faced various issues all throughout my life in terms of you know dealing with those issues. As well, exam is, is really giving you that perspective when you sit for exam. Uh, the aim of the ACCA is, of course, to strategically aim and align more closely to the workplace skill. That is the reason these changes have really come up. And we'll see in a while as to what those changes are. The exam will place more emphasis on the strategic thinking and professional skill rather than the reading exam content. I tell you, you know, just to give you a perspective, earlier until June 2023, as well exam used, you know, is, is a four-hour exam, wherein one hour of an exam generally gets into the reading of the exam because exam has huge content to read, which is like a case study. Then you have various exhibits, the backgrounds, the uh, the issues that 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 are there. There are various reports, there are various uh, uh, 
uh, analysis, there are various evaluations, there are various workings. The, the, the uh, I would say, uh, if there is any uh, uh, acquisition that is being con contemplated, then you have an Excel file also for that, citing your, you know, what is happening at that side of the table, how to analyze that, how to understand that is what examiner expects out of you. So effectively, they really want you to go through the, you know, the content and then start writing it. So if I really have to not, you know, give you a perspective as to what is really happening right now, one hour gets into the reading of the exam and then three hours are there to really write the exam. So effectively, four hour exam, wherein one hour gets into into reading and then three hours gets into writing. Now, what is really changing? Examiner really wants you to put an emphasis on the strategic thinking and professional skills rather than reading the exam content. And that's what they've done. What they've done is that they have reduced your reading content in the exam. What they're now coming up with is that they want to give you a pre-seen material. So they would give you a pre-seen material as in a material, a case, a context, which you would read in advance two weeks in advance before you really sit for exam. So they would effectively give you uh, a pre-seen material two weeks before the exam, and you would now need it to go through that content and then basis that content. And of course, they would add certain things out because it is only limited information that will be available on the pre-seen material. There will be you know, uh, some other context or other uh, you know, areas that they would be adding on, which you really need to assimilate an answer in the exam. So pre-seen material will be provided that just to give you the contextual information on the, on the case study organization and of course the industry. So by this logic, you would know that, you know, which kind of industry you're dealing with. Let's say it's an example of cement industry. So you would know which industry you're dealing with and they'll give you the organization perspective. So you would understand that, you know, what organization you're really supposed to answer in and so on and so forth. As much of the background information will not be pro will now be provided in advance, the exam duration has reduced from four hours to three hours, 15 minutes. So effectively, they have taken out your reading time, the time that you used to spend on reading, they have taken it out because they would be giving that to you in advance. So you would read that in advance and go there and of course start reading the exhibit and answer that. So there'll be less amount of time that they expect you to really be spending on reading, hence you would be saving time over there. The number of exhibits, which used to be like five, six, and at times seven exhibits that used to be there in the exams, they have reduced it significantly. Now you would only get, you know, four to five exhibits, uh, you know, in the exam. So it is not that you, you, you would be expecting like, you know, many exhibits the way it used to be earlier. The exam will now have three compulsory tasks. Now there'll be three, you know, one, two, and three. And then, you know, one can have, you know, let's say, uh, sub sub choices like A and B, and some can have like A, B, and C kind of requirements. But you would only have three compulsory tasks that are to be answered. There are no choices in the SPL exam. Even right now, there are no choices, and that is gonna be staying still. The only thing that changes is that many times, uh, if you see the earlier exam, you used to get four or five compulsory tasks, but now it will be only three compulsory tasks, and each task would have a varying number of parts and total marks, as we may understand. Is that clear, guys? Now, what all are the other changes? You know, the, while we have understood that, you know, of course, we would get a pre-seen material and, you know, that pre-seen material is something that you, you really need to go through, understand, and then you would set for exam. Now, there are various questions that are really come up that, you know, is there any other change? Uh, what do we do with the pre-seen material? How and, you know, the pre-seen material will be sent to us? How will we see how much time that will be available and so on and so forth? So I'll be answering each and every question right now over here. I, and I really want to remove all the doubts that anyone may have with reference to this exam, you know, as, as all of our registered students really, uh, you know, really uh, who are with us, you know, doing SVL, they would anyway be, you know, going through all of these content as they go forward. All five professional skills, there are five professional skills in the SVL exam. They will continue to be tested and still worth 20 marks in total. So there is no change over here. The only thing is that, you know, due to the reduced number of tasks and exam time, each professional skill will be tested only once. So what used to happen was that earlier they used to give you, since there were, there were many tasks that were given to you, the each professional skills was tested more than once in the exam at times for two marks and then at times for three marks or two marks again. Now what they've said is that one professional skill will be tested once in the exam. So effectively five professional skills will be asked as in, you know, will, will, will be there in the exam and each of them will be there only once. So effectively there are five tasks that would be there to be answered in the exam. 
uh, that that would have like four marks for each professional skills. There will no longer be two to three marks of professional skill requirement, as he just said. And as well, exam will no longer be answered as a single requirement in one word document. Now, this is to the folks who already know as well exam. Uh, as well exam used to have like the complete uh, uh, a case study and then the exhibits and then when you used to open up the exam in the exam center, all of the requirements that you needed to answer were given, were given on the right left hand side of it. So you can see all of the requirements like requirement A, B, C and D. Now what they've done is that they've changed it like the other profession level exams. You would on one page, you would only see one requirement and then you would move on to the other. There will be a separate session that we'll be hosting uh, wherein I'll take you through the, the CB environment of the SBL exam, then the new CB environment of the SBL exam in terms of how does that look. There would be a separate session on that. And for those who are seeing us on the YouTube or on the other social media platform, you can just subscribe to our channel for that to make sure that, you know, you really get to see uh, when, uh, you know, when we're releasing that or when that is really coming, you know, coming on the plate. Now, each task, uh, you know, will be completed as a separate requirement. And of course, a separate response or option would be needed, whether it is in the Word or in the Excel. And that is what is going to be the answer for it. And there will be slight change in the appearance of exam in the exam area. As I said, only one task will be shown at one time and it will no longer be possible to view all the tasks together as what was there earlier. Till June 2023, you would be seeing the old format and hence you would see various requirements at the same point in time. But as you go forward, you would only see one requirement and that is going to be it. Before I really go in there, any, any quick thoughts, any initial uh, you know, things that anybody has in their mind before I really go further? Anybody? All right. So what is regarding the pre-scene you know, content? Let's understand that as to what this pre-scene you know, content really means. The pre-scene content for an exam will be available two weeks ahead of the exam, as I said, and the content will be accessible on the exam planner. Student will receive an email confirmation when the content is available and you would be able to see the content and review the content after that. What is really important is, and I really want to answer that, that many of the students feel that, you know, uh, since we would get the pre-scene content uh, two weeks ahead, you know, what do we really need to do with that? We'll come up on that in a while. But the other question that I, I generally have been hearing is that, you know, what would happen uh, to this pre-scene content? Uh, you know, should, do we really need to memorize it or we will get that get to see that in the exam? Or when Till when we will be able to see this and so on and so forth. So guys, pre-scene content is available two weeks in advance and it is, it'll also be available on the exam day. Your, even your exam, when you would sit for there, that would also have this pre-scene you know, scene content over there. So there is no need to wrote, you know, wrote learn or memorize anything onto it. You just have to read it. But and and that that is more like a, a pre uh, exam uh, kind of a content being given to you, which you can read, and that would be available to you on the exam day also. So there is no need to be worried about anything. I have I have got this question from so many students around the world. I just wanted to answer that to make sure that you know there is no confusion around it. As we will practice one uh, one of the uh, question you know going forward. Um, in the in the new CB environment, I'll show you also, you know, as to where this pre-scene material, you know, is given over there. I'll show you that. All right. Now, what should I do? You know, considering that I you know I'm I'm new to ACCA, I'm planning for ACCA. I'm my SBL exam is left. You know, I have not given SBL exam earlier this this first time or this second time I've given this earlier. Now, what should I do? How should I plan? You know, if those are the questions that are coming into your mind, then this is certainly for you. Students will be advised to read read the pre-scene material ahead of the exam. You would have two weeks. You should certainly certainly. Uh, read the content. I think that is really important. You may do some research also to better understand some terminologies and activities for that industry and organization. But, you know, when you when you really go into the exam and start reading the content and the context, there are many times that, you know, there are some terminologies or activities that are there, which you are, may not be aware of. You know, you may get to struggle with those terms, right? You can do some research around that. You know, so you have two months, you can do some research, you talk on that, you can discuss that. I think that is the flexibility now being available to you, but you don't have to overdo that. That's, that's not something that is needed. 
then comes the discuss and prepare on pc material once you are seeing the material you know you can discuss it with your friends with your faculty you know you can you know of course the registered students of intram would be discussing that with me uh, in terms of you know what is there in that material how should i be thinking about that how you know what kind of things we really need to have in our mind and so on and so forth so you know you should certainly do something on that in terms of discussing and having a right mentor to really discuss that pc material once that is done then complete all the syllabus areas my friend you know uh, i think one of the thing that you really need to have in your mind is that while you would have it you know pre seen material being given to you two weeks in advance that doesn't mean that you know syllabus areas are not important you don't know what kind of question really gets into the exam so reading and completing the syllabus areas and not just overdoing this, the pre seen material is going to be of super important you you just can't just can't go by pre seen material only you have to review you have to know all of the syllabus areas come what may and that's really 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 important do not do not really miss on to that many of the students you know and this is something categorically being mentioned by acc also when they have really mentioned that you know what should you not be not be doing one thing is certainly there that you know do not overdo with the pre seen material it is just the case uh, you, you can understand the case but don't really contemplate as to what is really happening and what is really coming in the exam that's not something i should be thinking about so now what should i not do i just spoke on that students should not should not do further research as all the relevant information will be contained either in the pre seen material or in the exam itself you don't have to you know become a researcher there you know it's a case being given to you read it as a case understand it discuss it or of course discuss it with the with your mentor with the faculty you know they will guide you in terms of you know the things that may come your way and that is it you don't have to like you know be bothered too much about it and forget about syllabus areas because ultimately when the question would come the syllabus areas are going to be the super important thing so do not do not forget that the next thing is the question spotting many of the times you know when we see the pre seen material we start thinking about you know what kind of question comes from you know can come from here and you know and what kind of areas can be tested while you can do that you can of course do all your maths around it but you never know you know what acc will be putting forward so you know rather than wasting too much of time on that rather it is good to understand the case and understand the industry i think that should be the most important thing but one thing you know when i say overdo thing you know i really wanted to highlight this that many of the students what they do is that if they know that there is a question that has come up let's say on the automobile industry you know they'll google this they they'll start googling the automobile industry and they'll you know see the the ebitda see the pat and so on and so forth they will see they'll start seeing all those things but those are not relevant from the examination standpoint so don't overdo you know on your research you just have to stay within the boundaries of that case and that is gonna be it no route learning guys i think i have said that enough now there is no route learning that is needed in the sbl exam you know sbl exam is the most common sensical exam in the world and i keep saying that like a broken record it is the most common sensical exam in the world i have students i have uh, you know uh, successful students around the world my friend you know who have done and cleared the you know uh, the the sbl exam with the flying flying colors and the reason is that i have always always pushed them not to learn anything in the sbl exam but to cite out their practical experiences as to what they would do in this scenario they would get in as they get into any industry so the more you will become you know common sensical there the more you would become you know upfront there and no the more you will become professional over there the more marks you will get in the exam is that clear yes sir now what is not changing you know I, and i really wanted to you know prepare this slide and bring it over here so that at least you should know that you know what is really not changing in the sbl exam so that you do not have everything in your mind that you know everything has changed nothing has changed as such to as you know in in the sense that what we have what 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 you have mentioned has changed are the only things that have changed nothing else the exam will still have one integrated case study and all the requirements related to that single scenario that's going to be staying the same students are you know will be assuming a role or roles and carry out various tasks with the focus on application of knowledge as i said no rote learning including strategic thinking business direction problem solving as i said you have to be the business leader of an organization and that's what this exam really expects out the exam will remain closed we will be will remain closed book exam and have 80 technical marks and 20 professional skill marks it's going to be remaining the same syllabus content is largely the same there is no change in the syllabus area you know so september 2023 only thing that changes is this pre pre seen material kind of thing else in that all of the content and the syllabus areas remains to be the same the quality integrity in the rigor exam is also you know is not changing so everything as far as the expectation of the examiner is concerned from the sbl standpoint is going to be remaining there or going to be same there is that clear yes sir 
Now, coming on to you know uh, the the FinTram support that you would get on the ACCS bill side, you know we have our full course being available, wherein we we you know we take you through the entire S bill sessions, entire S bill syllabus areas, and along with that, what we offer you is the revision boot camp, wherein we practice a lot of questions of the past exams, uh, including the the concept questions, the exam standard questions, and the past exam questions. Now, all of those questions really gives you the color in terms of you know what the examiner really expects out from you and how one should be writing the exam in the best possible way. Very important. Coming on to that, you in case you're preparing as well yourself, you can also take a revision boot camp to practice questions with us. And of course, knowing how examiner is really contemplating and of course, answering, you know, expecting an answer from yourself. We would also offer you the memory chart book. Now, this is the graphical or the pictorial de you know, depiction of various SBL syllabus areas that has been specifically crafted and drafted for you to make sure that you get the real-time real time, um, feeler of the various SBL areas. And that really sticks onto your mind and you're able to memorize that as quickly as possible. And for the folks who have given the SBL exam earlier or do not have time to really spend on uh, in terms of, you know, uh, they're really, I, I would say, to an extent, very short, you know, having a very small shortage of time. You have a fast track course of SBL also being available. And, uh, you know, this really helps you cover the entire SBL content in a much faster way. Uh, and there is nothing that we have left, you know, as far as any syllabus here is concerned. But of course, you know, the speed with which we have explained and what we, the rigor that we wanted is, is, is really high in the fast track course. And of course, it comes with the, with the revision boot camp and you know with the mock exam to to really help you in terms of you know what may go wrong your way i think that's pretty much guys i wanted to cover i just wanted to you know be more informative here to give you a context in terms of you know what you should be knowing from the changes that are happening in the industry as far as the SBL exam is concerned so that you're aware and of course you can take a more informed decision for yourself in terms of how one should be preparing for this exam and handling the exam in the best possible way I have provided the number of Fintram and, of course, the detail with regards to our, our firm and, and, and our email. You can reach out to us. We'll be more than happy to you know, help you in your SBL journey. I've also given my, you know, my own WhatsApp number in case you want to reach out to me. More than happy to really help and support. That's pretty much, you know, guys, it was, it was more of a quick recap kind of thing that I really wanted to do. Uh, you know, on the on the changes that are coming in SPL, I'm happy to answer any questions anyone may have or any concerns, queries that you know anyone may have, so as to help you take the right decision for yourself, guys. Irfan, Hina, Kanika, Jitika, Shan, anyone? Hello. Hello. Yes, please. Yeah. Good afternoon, sir. Hi. Good afternoon. Uh, sir, actually. I have appeared three times in SBL and my marks are like 43, 42 and 41. Hmm. Uh, each and every time I, I am able to write 100 marks paper with pro pure BPP format. I have watched, uh, as you know, Hassan Dolsani sir uh, webinar, but still I don't know where I am getting wrong. I am done with all 12 papers, uh, but I am stuck on SBL for now one year. Sorry? I, have, uh, I missed your last statement. I uh, I said uh, I have completed all 12 papers mm. of S ACCA and now I am stuck on SBL for uh, last one year. So I my maths are like 43, 42, and 41. Mm. Each time I am able to write 100 time uh, 100 marks paper, but still I don't know where I am getting wrong. Hmm. But what do you feel that you know what what is the you know, what is the area of your struggle? What do you, what do you think yourself, since you have been giving the exam like various times, what do you feel that, you know, has been the area of your struggle? If I really have to ask you. Uh, I am able to complete 100 marks paper with pure formats. I know difference between letter format, email format, how to present it, how to act as an uh, advisor, how to act as an CEO, how to prepare reports. I have played all other papers in first attempt. Actually, I'm CA final student shifted from CA final to ACCA. Fair I enough. was available with nine uh, exemptions uh, as per ACCA rules. So I cleared SBR, SBL and AFM, uh, sorry, SBR, APM. I have cleared APM in first attempt, but I'm not able to clear SBL. As you know, APM and SBL have common slavers. Yes. But I'm not able to clear SBL with, uh, after giving so much, so much to it. As I know, this is the last paper. Mm. So... 
I have done with BPP coaching, BPV, ECR, Haswan Doswani sir, uh, webinar, 100 marks paper. I know the difference between five professional skills. On, uh, I am aware with the most of the syllabus right now without touching book. But I am not able to understand where I am going wrong. See, honestly, till the time I've seen, you know, your performance in, in, you know, in, in the class or in, in some of the mock exams, it will be very difficult to comment on that. But the way I'm listening you and the way I'm uh, understanding you, I think one thing that I could make out is that maybe you would need to understand how to write an answer as taking into or taking into a role of the position that is being given to you. Many of the times what we feel is, is that, you know, we are giving the examiner, you know, what he needs from the syllabus area standpoint, but then we forget in terms of, you know, how to ensure that, you know, general professionalism is being displayed, how to ensure that professional skills are, are always given with reference to how, uh, you know, how to answer the exact requirement of what is being asked. Uh, and last but not the least is how to ensure that, you know, we are actually applying the models that we have learned and writing the content in the verbatim. So many of the times students has this problem and you know they struggle with it. I can only you know I can only tell you if I have if I've had that discussions on various topics with you, but broadly these are the areas where I feel uh, and it can be one, it can be two, it can be all uh, are the areas wherein you might be struggling with. So you can, of course, speak to your faculty, you know, who you are really working with and he can guide you. If you want to take our course, you know, feel free, more than happy to really help you there. And, you know, that's that's how I would suggest. I have not taken any kind of coaching. Like I can say I have taken a detailed coaching. I have taken just BPP ECR. That is, uh, you might be aware what is BPP ECR. They are just speaking. There is no teacher in that videos. But uh, so to change some change some style, uh, Prashant. Why don't you you know why don't you go to some some faculty? And again, I'm not saying me. You, know, you can go to anyone who you think is is right for you. Go to any faculty and you know take some help from them because many of the times there are some small pieces that are being missed in the big puzzle, and those small pieces are really troubling us. So there is no harm in taking somebody's help. You know, rather than uh, paying ACCA three times the examination fee. It is good to pay a tutor some fee and get the right guidance and clear the exam and move on. There is no harm in that, Prashant. And again, I'm not telling you to you know come to me and you know take a you know uh, take our sessions. While you know I'll be more than happy to help you there. But I'm just trying to guide you that you know what should be the right spirit of really thinking about it. So this is the confusing part actually. Um, I have a very long history of failures. To be honest, I, I have failed seven times in CA final and now four, four, uh, three times in ACCA. I am short of one group of being CA and one short of paper short of being ACCA. So I don't know what's, what is the matter, both in CA and both in CA and ACCA. Prashant, there are two ways to look at yourself. One is to look at your failure and another one is to look at what you have achieved. Do you think, you know, clearing all the three ACC exams, what you have cleared in ACCA is, 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 is a cakewalk? Nope. It's not a cakewalk. You must be having something. And that is the reason you would have cleared your ACCA, three of the ACC exams in first group. There is something that is not working for you in SVL. And as I said, that can be your writing skills. You know, many of the students have an issue with the writing skills in the SVL exam, primarily because, you know, they they struggle with in terms of framing up their answers. They, they become more rote learner there rather than applying the concept to the question. So I would say target your problem rather than you know thinking demotivated for it. Target. No, I'm not demotivated at all. No, you're sounding that my friend. That's what no, I'm no, I'm not demotivated at all. <laughs> I will okay, appear good. again. Good, but don't sound like that in that case. No, no. There might be some communication issue or internet issue, but I'm not demotivated at all. I just want to clear this paper and have a chartered holder degree. That's it. I will it. have it, Prashant. It is not that you would not have it. Just strategize yourself in a better way. I, this is the issue. I think that this is an issue with ACCA. They do not show us the um, 
examine uh, our answer sheets like in ca you are yourself a ca from india and uh, i think you will be aware that icai uh, issues suggested answer and provide our answer sheets why don't you acca do it i would refrain from commenting on that prashan you you pick up 10 students of chartered accountancy they will talk about 10 other things about chartered accountancy institute so you know i would refrain from them you know all of the associations have their own ways of doing things so let's not let's not go in there so i was saying just uh, from my point of view if i was available with one of my answer sheets i would have known in first go what is wrong with me but uh, you know prashan you know prashan there are controllable factors and then there are uncontrollable factors this is your uncontrollable factor my friend you can't control this and no one can no one can help you out there now if uh, i can only help you you know as i said if you would sit for a mock exam and you would give a mock exam we can only help you giving you the comments on what is really not working well in that mock exam to you that is what we can do but when acca doesn't issues it it doesn't issue it. so according to my situation should i go for a vision boot can fast track course or full course it is absolutely you, you, uh, you know dependent on you i you know if you if you if you ask me my advice i think the best thing for you would be a fast track course okay and in fast track course you will take mock exams also yes there will be mock exam towards the end okay and uh, detailed marking will be done on that mock exam yes you would get a detailed review prashant okay sir thank you anybody else guys anything i can help you out with i just wanted this to can be I, can, I, can i can i can i say something mr apar singh hello yes, sir please. yes please uh, actually uh, my terminology is that uh, see we, we are actually we are professional so i think the conceptual clarity should be uh, more and as you said that rightly that the framing of the answer should be properly that what you should you should know what actually the question is asking rather than writing the uh, bunch of papers so i think the conceptual clarity and the knowledge of industry we can use while writing the exam so that will be because these are these techniques i learned from uh, air one uh, atul agarwal uh, when i clear my first <laughs> first group so i'm planning to give my ca second group he told that rather than reading big big books you just be precise in your answers and write a conceptual note so i need advice from your end in this one so oh, this think, tactic I'm, this I'm tactic absolutely with you irfan on this sorry i'm you know i stopped you sorry i stopped you irfan go ahead yeah, yeah this is what my my concern is all about so same same uh, uh, principle i can apply for acc examination what you say because you know sometime what we write we, uh, the we should write from the viewer point, uh, reader point of view so that is my also the concept so See, the conceptual clarity should be proper when you are right when you are framing the answer one is that the other piece is many of the acc exams they really want you to get into the role of that person who is answering it for example in sbl exam he would give mm. you that you are a uh, let's say you are a consultant of an organization and cfo is asking you to draft a memo for him mm -hmm. now you need to know that you are you are a consultant and how will a cf how will a consultant will write a memo for a cfo how we will convince you know it's it's so you need really need to step into the shoes of a consultant and then start writing it and you rightly mentioned that you know you don't have to cram up or or do the rote learning there you just have to you know go by the flow and start writing what really comes on to your mind considering the conceptual framework into your mind yeah that's what that's what that's that's Agreed. really absolutely yeah. with yeah, you thank you. yeah thank you very much thank you you know we are used to writing emails day in and day out especially with the folks i'm sure you know prashant you're working in an ms you know ey you must be writing 100 emails in a day right but when it comes to writing an email in the acc format you know you i'm you know i'm just giving you a perspective you know the way i i, I would want somebody to write an email in an exam would be to to one of course to first to mention you know to whom is addressed to 
and coming from subject then it will be more to understand that you have a polite start you know greeting start then you would write the content you would give the context then you would give the you know the problem statement and then you would give the solution and then you would end it on a positive note now while it seems you know very easy to hear but when you start you know writing on your own you tend to miss these small small things and then you know we are used to writing emails and we feel that you know email writing is 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 no challenge for any one of us but exam has a different way of understanding that how are you writing an email so you may do best as per you know your own official email kind of it but that examiner may not accept so those are like small small things i'm not saying that is a mistake prashant that you are doing but i'm just trying to cite you an example that those are like small small things which may go wrong uh, and may not be working your way or for anyone for that matter so uh, uh, in uh, this last paper of in march 23 uh, like uh, as you said uh, the beginning of email should be very clear and uh, related to the stuff that we are going to present am i right yes so i used to do the thing uh, this email is related first line was taken from exhibit itself that this email is related to this problem as told by uh, hasan dosani sir this email is related to this uh, pro uh, uh, problem and how we will uh, do this and so on like uh, what are the facts what is, is the appropriate thing to be done and how it will fit in this situation and what were the conclusions in that for example in this uh, paper there was a question regard related to two projects of housing so the professional skill uh, was that was a uh, uh, asked in that the question was a analysis skill so i did the analysis of both situation what is more beneficial to the company uh, by doing all the ratios and all the things which were uh, given in question and gave a pro uh, proper conclusion this is my approach i don't uh, i know it will be on paper in bound paper it will be better to represent this but uh, as i am just giving a overview how i present the paper which is fine prashant i you know as i said you know it is very difficult to comment like this uh, you know but having said that i'm just giving you some of the pointers you you don't you don't have to like take it to yourself i'm just trying to guide you what kind of pointers can work your way mr mr apar i will give you a brilliant example recently happened in our in our organization we have a issue hello yeah yeah go ahead we have an issue actually and i when i when i drafted the email completely with with the details i drafted i kept cc to my uh, uh, group ceo my ceo my deputy ceo and uh, all the seven regional officers like including australia so you know <laughs> when the, when i got the reply i got the seven seven or eight type of reply different replies <laughs> for the same problem so this might also happen you know you need to see the exam examiner point of view also what exactly he lost see seven 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 people reply and you know the best part was reply from the uh, from the ceo not from the group ceo also so everybody appreciated the ceo, uh, group, uh, CEO rather than they appreciated the group ceo but it doesn't mean that so this is also the things you know when we when we are writing anything we should think from the point of view of the reader not from the what we write we think that what we do is 100% correct but what the reader point of view that i always uh, that's always matter actually you know this is what happened exactly in our organization the matter was solved later but see all the seven people has a different uh, different prospects different uh, reply for the one particular problem so th this is what uh, uh, i can uh, say uh, this is happening in in real in real time situation that's it thank you <laughs> i agree very very common thing that you mentioned ifan <laughs> All right, guys. Anybody has anything before we really wrap up? Yes. So I just had one doubt. Go ahead. Uh, so just yes. So just wanted to quickly check that uh, I've heard from someone that after being an affiliate or member, 
we do we do generally get the back end or the uh, you can say that gdc's role like in ui it is gd uh, it is gds and kpmg kgs like back end or offshore roles so is it like that or uh, is it not like that uh, how it goes generally it depends no uh, what kind of uh, you know position you get and what kind of companies you are really aspiring for there are people who are in audit there are people who are in back end uh, you know back office or gds as you may want to call it then there are people who are in front end jobs you know and i know many of the students who are working for you know barclays bank or you know royal bank of scotland or morgan stanley or goldman sachs and so on and so forth so they are doing various variety of works uh so it is very difficult to comment like this apart it there is a lot that depend on you know what you really bring on table and what kind of openings you are applying for and of course how are you doing in the in those interviews to really crack that so uh, you know like the way you said that you know acc affiliate are working like that i can tell you that you know uh, if 50% of chartered accountants are also working on the same profile so does that mean that chartered yeah. accountants are not working in a good profile absolutely not it is not that way so it just depends, depends on you know oh, all right, what, all right. what you really bring on table what companies you really uh, target and how you do well or or not in the interview and then you know the rest is history so uh, very subjective so it goes like that we can get the onshore and offshore uh, oh yes, 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 yes. Right. i have oh, uh, you, okay. i have many students who are now working in you know luxembourg uh, london uh, spain you know and just by doing acc right they started off here and then they moved there so and you go on linkedin you will you know find it yourself i don't have to really you know say anything to you on that regard all right all right got it thanks all right so guys uh, as i said you know uh, i just show you my you know the our numbers again just to make sure that you know you are not missing us on this you know you have uh, our number and uh, you know in case you need anything any support or any help feel free you know we will be more than happy to help you out there all right guys thank you very much for your time i think uh, i would i was able to add some value onto your self uh, in some way or the other as far as the acc asbl exam is concerned and since we spoke more broadly on acc also i i thought uh, i i think that i i was able to add some value to you and uh, you know as i said you know feel free to uh, feel free to comment uh, you know in the comment box in the video and we'll be more than happy to pick this up thank you very much Thank you.